Hello and welcome to Genetically Modified Dragon's YouTube channel. My name is Keith. If you guys want to do me a favor and click that red button that says subscribe right before this video starts, go ahead and click the bell as well so you can be notified when I upload a video. Hope you guys enjoy this video. And before we get started, again, What's going on today guys today i'm going to go over a little bit on how i'm keeping my spiny tail iguana um stenosaurus pelliaris it's right there it's a little male his name is leo and i have him in a little raptor breeze i believe it's uh, 15 by 15 by 30. um i have a little branch in here just so you can get closer to the lights and bass but uh Got some rocks in here, cause most animals with spiny tails like he does, most of them seek refuge in rocks. That way if a predator is trying to get them, they go in here head first, leave the tail out with the spikes on it so that the animal couldn't get them. And the way that the, the spikes there, they're on the tail, they go backwards. So if something is trying to pull them out, the spikes hit against the rocks the rock crevices and keep them from being able to be, and keep them from being able to be pulled out so so what I did is I put some ledger stone some slate and I also have like a human hide in here I just use a little um I recycled a um a bin that I get my um, spring mix in put a piece of slate on top broke off a piece of the slate so you have a place to go in so you feel like he's hiding so if he's shedding or needs some extra moisture, he can go in there. But for the most part, this is a dry species. So, yeah, again, I have um, some ledger stone. I bought a big piece. I just dropped it down and I just lay it in here. Layered it. So he has different sections that he can go in there and hide. Most of the time, he spend his time right here on this branch. Um, like I said in my last, in one of my other videos, um, he's pretty tame from the breeder, but he does um, try to run at first. But he he hasn't tried to bite me or anything yet. So, but when he want to seek refuge, that's where he goes, straight to the rocks. That. And right now I'm feeding them. This is a spring mix. I got a piece of a couple pieces of um, cut grapes in here. I also have some some little millworms. There's a couple soup worms in here too. Some soup worm. Just to give them a little variety, and I'm using um, the sticky tongue mineral for indoor. It's calcium and mineral supplement. That's what I use. But yeah, again, I put rocks on the bottom so you can hide if you feel unsafe. I got this branch. They like to climb. And this is a screen cage, so you get air everywhere. It's not building up humidity in here. And it's also not holding all the heat. So all the heat is going to be basically right here. And I got the UVB light up there. So he's up here most of the time basking. But when if you feel bothered, he can go down here and hide. So, yeah, this is just a little uh, 65 watt. And it's about maybe eight inches away from the basking point of the enclosure. I got slate and ledger stone. A little recycled um, vegetable container. And that's pretty much it for right now. Until I get this one set up, I'm gonna put a fountain in here. I do need to do some modifications. I need to put a different lighting. I explained this in my video, but I didn't say that I needed to cut out more of the wood so that there's more um, airflow in here. The front door is gonna be uh, majority screen, but I wanna put some screen in the back too. So I probably take that back section down, maybe maybe nine inches just so air can go straight through the cage 
See the old door right here? This is all screen. This is the old door that fell off. So the new door is going to be pretty much similar to that. So that the air isn't um, stale inside of the cage. And again, I'm putting the uh, um, light fixtures up here. I'm putting a T5, a 24-inch one, diagonal along the top. Putting a Scootness um, heat fixture to the corner. I'm going to put a ledge in here and put a rock on top of the ledge so that it can bass and get heat from the top and the bottom. Put substrate in here. Um, probably like two or three inches of soil with some rocks similar to this cage here so that he can go down there and feel safe when he needs to. Um, but this one is pretty much minimalistic right now so that I can keep my daily handling um, with him and keep him calm so that when he's a big specimen, I can actually show him off in my hand and raise some awareness on the species and get it more popular and hopefully more people will own them because a lot of people don't even know what they are. Um, before I went to Bob Robert Bloom House in Arizona, I didn't know what they were. Um, when I saw the adults, I was amazed. He has a couple of different um, Stenosaurus species, but the Pelieris with the blue sides was one of my favorites, and I had purchased three, and I'm just getting back into them now, so just wanted to show you guys how I set them up. Pretty, pretty basic. The cage has little, little things you flip to lock on like that and he'll come out in a couple minutes after I go back in the house I didn't um, take him out right now because I want him to eat a little bit more so I've been handling him less less I've been trying to get him to eat out of my hand but he haven't taken anything from my hand yet I almost got him to take some strawberry from me yesterday he just licked it though um, but these guys can eat pretty much everything a bearded dragon eats. They eat greens, uh, crickets, dubia, worms. So pretty much the same diet as a bearded dragon. They're going to eat a little bit more greens than a bearded dragon because they are iguana. But right now when they're young, just like with bearded dragons, they're more, they're more, um, Insect, sap, um, savage. So they like to eat insects more than anything right now, but eventually they are going to be mostly on um, veggies. Okay, so I, I do. Uh, I keep this um, cage pretty high because with most young animals that um, are like iguanas and stuff like that, um, they either stay in the stay in the trees high above predators or they hide in the rocks and i have them on top of this other cage just to give him a little bit more height so he's not feeling intimidated with me towering over him when i come in here so when i come in here i'm pretty much like eye level with him i have the camera right where my head is so when i come in here we pretty much face to face because he's basking right here most of the time um but i do have my little servers down here i'm gonna be doing an update video on them I have slowed these guys down on feeding um, when it was cooler because I keep them without any heat. This is just UVB. I to keep them up on a natural cycle. But now that I'm picking up the food, they're growing a lot faster. Um, I have um, some that I sold that are pretty much like 16 inches already. So these guys are behind. But once I pick up the uh, feeding, they're gonna get a lot bigger. And I'm going to do an update video on these guys. If you like to see that, go ahead and um, subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss the video. Got a couple grates in there right now. They kicked a couple of pieces of substrate in there. So I'm going to clean this out. So I'm probably going to do a video. I'm going to clean the cages out, give you an update on them, show you how big they are right now so that you can see how fast they grow. Um, the females over here. I'm pretty sure that one's a male and this is a female. The female has two tails 
and I'm gonna go into detail on why she has two tails uh, once I um, do the video, the next video. So um, subscribe if you want to see a little bit more in detail about the Lacertas, and then we can go on from there. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Turn on for notifications. Comment down below on any videos you might want to see. I do have an unboxing coming soon. So tune in. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.